Hello, we're, we're with Dr. Peter Morris, who is the Medical Director of Wake County Human Services, a past president of North Carolina Pediatric Society, and an active parishioner at Church of the Advocate in Carborough. He's here with us to talk about influenza, the flu season, and H1N1 in particular. Dr. Morris, thank you for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. What is influenza and what's H1N1? This year we expect two types of influenza-like illness. The usual seasonal flu, for which people usually get their yearly flu vaccine, and this novel H1N1. This is the one that people heard about from Mexico and heard about in the Southern Hemisphere. It is different. We don't seem to be immune to it. The good news is that it has not proven to be as severe as we feared it would be. More people get ill at one time, yes, but we're not seeing the death rates and the hospitalization rates that we feared. So two flu viruses this year. What kind of precaution should we take in general? The best protection against uh, flu-like illness is if you're sick with a fever, stay home. It will declare itself to be influenza-like. That is, high fever, shaking chills, muscle aches and pains, raspy throat and cough. Usually that evolves over the first four to five days. Most people will be able to be without fever by that fifth day and can be returning to work or to liturgy. Um, so stay home if you're sick, stay home with your sick, stay home with your sick. Maintain social distance, mm -hmm. meaning somewhere between three and six feet. Wash your hands frequently, cover your cough, and if you're in a risk group, get a vaccine. Washing of hands includes using Purell or... Yes, the, the, the alcohol-based, uh, non-water-based soaps are very effective against influenza. Everyone should remember that it's actually in the drying of surfaces and hands that we kill viruses. So when you put the Purell or whatever brand on your hand, it's not how wet you are. It's when you become dry that the virus actually kills itself in the evaporation. Now, how will we know um, if things get worse or better? We've been using a graded sort of response to this uh, paying attention to the Centers for Disease Control. They are updating their website on a regular basis, www.cdc.gov slash flu, and they actually will tell you what they've updated. We are in North Carolina in what is called a widespread prevalence of the influenza virus, and it's nearly all H1N1 right now. We move from none to sporadic to regional to widespread. In widespread, no special conditions about congregating, no special conditions about coming together, except if you're sick, don't spread it. We'll move from widespread to endemic, meaning it's everywhere, to epidemic, meaning it's affecting a lot of people. As that changes, you'll hear CDC and public health officials changing their warning. If you hear the word pandemic, it's changed not only in where it is, but how virulent it is and how sick people are becoming. That's a different bird recommendations will be changed. We've been warning people about pandemic. We're experiencing widespread flu. What about churches and our liturgical customs, particularly receiving communion, common cup, and tension, and all of those kinds of questions? What about those? What advice do you have? Um, I think right now with widespread uh, illness within our, our communities, we can be attending church. There's no reason to avoid a social gathering mm -hmm. unless you're sick. Um, we can be passing the peace in our usual manner, and we can actually be sharing the common cup. Now, if you're ill, if you know you've been exposed to someone who's ill, you might, at the time of the peace, want to, to cross your arms, make eye contact, and wish someone peace. And you might want to refuse to receive under the wine. It's in the sharing of that cup that we have the opportunity to share a, a wet influenza germ, if you will. As far as intinction goes, I tend to think that having the Eucharistic minister be the one to intinct, they'll know if they've touched the lips of the mucous membrane. They'll know if their fingers have become potentially contaminated. They can step back, clean their hands, and then resume. So for intinction, I would say perhaps the Eucharistic minister. Um, no change in practice right now, however. And it's always permissible in our tradition for people to receive communion in one kind, to receive just of the bread or just of the cup, um, or as you say, with an intention. But recommended recommendation is that we really, uh, the Eucharistic minister should do the intincting because uh, they can wash their hands if, if they need to. I think putting Purella or other soaps at the front of your church as you come in is a great idea. What you probably haven't noticed is that we don't, Right now, we're not touching ourselves, not touching our face. We all have mannerisms that bring our hands to our face, that bring our hands to our eye, that bring our hands to our nose. If you knew that you wouldn't touch your face or touch yeah. 
a secreting membrane. During the time of church, you could wash your hands at the beginning and you could receive the, both elements uh, at the time I of church. I know it's vision right now. But I, I think we all touch ourselves a little bit more than that. So. Dr. Morris, thank you very much for this. God bless. Keep faith. <laughs>